good evening. So I'm back here with my husband. He's doing his treatment. He's taking a nap right now. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to come on right now and discuss a little something with y'all. I had somebody to send me a message earlier today um, that was asking, she said, I want to turn my focus to God. I really do. But I just don't get how people do that. Literally. How do I forget about the fact that I cannot have, have my own children and self-pity and instead focus on praising God? How do people do that? And the reply I gave to her was really simple, but I'd like to go in a little deeper with the reply that I gave her um, because I was on my way to Longview this morning when that text came in and I didn't have my Bible with me, but I've got it now. So how do you turn your focus from the issues in your life um, and self-pity and and what have you how do you turn all of that focus into God first we have to die to ourselves every day we have to get up daily and decide we're going to die to ourselves, and we're going to let the life of God come into us instead of our lives okay and we may have to die to ourselves all day long depending on what's going on in your life at that moment in that day there's been days that I've had to literally from the time I got up to the time I went to bed die to myself and continually talk to God which is praying to God continually um, so what does the Bible say about dying to ourself in John 3 30 it says he must become greater, and I must become less. He must become greater, and I must become less. In other words, God has to be the greater part of the equation in our lives from day to day, and all day, every day, okay? Because if we've got more of our focus on Him, then we have no time to focus on our self-pity or on our problems, or on our issues, or our whatever's going on with us. Um, let me back up to uh, 27. To this John replied, A man can receive only what is given him from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said, I am not the Christ, but I am sent ahead of him. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine and it is now complete. He must become greater and I must become less. John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin. He was six months older than Jesus. He was out in the desert living on locusts and um, wearing uh, camel skin um, preaching out in the wilderness about a man that no one knew about yet so I'm sure everybody thought he was crazy you know but he believed that he had to become less so that Jesus could become more and that's what we're talking about here in Galatians 2 20 and 21 let me go over here I've got all these papers in the way here sometimes I have to fight with them to get to where I'm going oh all these papers I really need to clean this thing out. Okay, Galatians 2, 20 and 21 says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. 
I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. So right here it's talking about how we have been crucified with Christ. When you come to Christ, first let me say that if you are, how is it that it was put to me? If you are wanting to turn your focus more towards God, and you really are, then one, God is drawing you near. He's drawing you near to Him, okay? And when this happens, you're going to meet opposition, because the devil does not want that, okay? He does not want you focusing on God. He does not want you focusing your life around God. So he's going to meet you with opposition. And that's when you must resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Um, in Galatians 5, 24 and 25, um, it says, Those who belong to Christ Jesus have been crucified. Oh, whoops. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. He's putting down some trees over there. So, um... When you come to Christ and you get baptized, when they lower you into the water... They say um, that they're burying the old and raising you into the new life. So what they're doing there um, is symbolically they're burying your old life, the life you just died to. And they're raising you in the resurrection of Christ. Okay, They've laid all of your old life, your old sins, your old mistakes all of your worries and and your self pities and all of those they're laying them in the tomb just like they laid Jesus in the tomb but then they're bringing you back out of the water they're bringing you into the resurrection of Christ okay um, 1 Corinthians 15 31 I die every day I mean that brothers just as surely as I glory over you in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, we have to die every day to ourselves. So that Christ can come and dwell within us. Okay? Um, and once you have become a new creation in Christ, in Ephesians... In Ephesians 4, 22 through 24, you were taught with regard, let me make sure I'm in the, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self created to be like God and true righteousness and holy. Um, if you're a new creation in Christ, you will choose to die to yourself every day. Because the moment you came to Christ was the moment you made that decision. So we should stick to that decision daily. Hourly, if we have to. Minute by minute. Second by second. However it has to happen, we need to stick to that. Because that's what we've already decided on when we said, Yes, Lord, I'm yours. That was the decision we had already made. So we need to stick to that decision. And then in Colossians 3.10. Give me a second, people. Well, let me go ahead and do 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ... He is a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. Amen. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. 
that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. Hallelujah. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Even when we were foes of God, he was already laying out the plans on how we could be reconciled to him. Okay? And that was through Christ Jesus, who died on the cross. Um, Romans 6, 1 through 6. Let me get over there. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be done away with, that, uh, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. So, when we die to ourselves daily, this is telling us that we're dying to our sin. Okay? We are selfish beings, because we have a heart. The heart is selfish. The heart is evil. And that's why we have to die to ourselves continually every day. It's because we are evil. We are inherently evil. Um, but those of us that have come to the saving grace of Christ, um, we're not by any means perfect, but we understand that he died for us, that he died for our sins, for our wickedness. Um, does that mean that it's okay for us to go out and sin? No, that doesn't give us a permission slip to go out and sin willfully. Um, Romans 6, 8 says, Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. Um, so that's dying to sin. And then Romans 13, 14 um, states, Rather clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires <clears throat> of the sinful nature. Romans 12, 1 through 2 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve that, uh, what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So, that's talking about being set apart from the world. Because when you fully want to focus your life on Christ, you have to be set apart from the world. You can no longer live for this world. Okay? Because we're living for something more once we come to Christ and we start focusing our attentions on Christ. Um, we're now living for the kingdom. We are now God's representatives on this earth. And we don't want to make him look bad. Even though sometimes we do unintentionally. Sometimes we approach people with good intention, but it turns out wrong, okay? Um, and that's the human condition, okay? Sometimes, 
And sometimes we will approach them and we're not judging them, but they think we're judging them. And they will call us out real fast on it. But you also have to be remember, being a Christian, people are going to call you out real fast on anything you do. Okay? Especially if they aren't a follower of Christ. Um... I encourage y'all, if you're trying to focus your life on, on Christ, um, then I encourage you to go on your cell phones and download the Encouragement app. It is our local, uh, it's our local Christian station, which is KBNE 89.5, um, and it also has The Well on it, uh, which The Well is preaching all the time. Um... And I, I encourage you, if you're wanting to switch your focus from you to God, to have a God-centered life, then I challenge you to listen to KBNE for 30 days, and it will change your life, okay? It will slowly begin to switch your focus. Your prayer life, I promise, will become more full, more abundant. To the point of overflowing um, you will wake up every day feeling fresh and renewed you will find that joy of the Lord by listening to their music um, and they also play testimonies um, of people that have called in during um, their praise to give their testimonies of why KBNE is so important to them there's no commercials on KBNE. They do not want to disrupt the worship. Um, but just listen to it for 30 days. Quit listening to the radio station you're listening to now. And begin to listen to KBNE. Okay. And once again, that app is called Encouragement. And it is, you can find it in your Play Store. Okay. Um, and I promise it will change your life if you allow it to. Because a lot of the reason why we are able to switch our focus is first, like I said, God's calling you. He's drawing you near to Him. Okay? Secondly, we have to be willing participants. You have to be willing to switch your focus to Christ. Okay? Um, and by being willing, you have to be willing to die to yourself daily, okay? Um, words of encouragement for dying for the glory of God is, my favorite scripture is Philippians 121, and that is, to live for Christ is gain, or what is it, um, Hang on, my brain just went blank because I've got too much going on in my brain, I guess. But it's uh, to live for Christ. To live for Christ is to die. Wait, I'm sorry, y'all. Give me just a minute. I'm serious. My brain is fried right now, I guess. Oh, goodness. Any other time. I'd be able to, to, to spout it out real fast. <laughs> but that's the way it is. When you're in here talking and you're trying to get it all out, you know, your brain just... Bleep. So, Philippians 121, I swear to you this is my favorite scripture. Um, it says, for, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. I had it all backward there for a minute. Um... And that's true, and those are just words of encouragement for those of you that are dying to yourself, dying for the glory of the kingdom. Um, uh, Philippians 2.13 is another good one. It says, uh, For it is God who works in you uh, to will and to act according to his good purpose. So, um, if you go on down through there, this is, an, this is just a way that you can die to yourself for the glory of God. 
um, do everything without complaining or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault, in a crooked and depraved generation, in which you shine like stars in the universe, as you hold out the word of life, in order that I may boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor for nothing. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service among your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. So um, let's take a look real quick over here at Hebrews 11.1. 1. Because um, focusing your life, oh, let me find it first. Focusing your life on God and making Him the center of your life um, takes faith. But first, what is faith? Okay. In Hebrews 11, 1, it says, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Okay. We can't see. God face to face. Okay, we cannot see him. Okay. Um but we can feel him. We can feel his presence. We can feel his peace, his joy, his love, you know. Uh we can feel all of that, his warmth. And if we listen close enough, we can hear his voice. Okay. If we pay close enough attention when we're feeling really, really low, really, really bad, we can feel his embrace around us, okay? So that's what faith is, okay? Faith is not what we can see. It's being sure and certain of what we do not see. We live by faith alone. We walk through faith alone. That to me is beautiful, okay? Um, and everybody has faith, okay? Um, for those that don't believe in God, it takes a lot more faith for them to not believe in God than it does for us as Christians to believe there is a God. Um, I, I encourage you to read chapter 11. Because it's the Hero Hall of Faith. Um, it talks about Abraham and Moses and Jacob and I believe um, a whole bunch of others are mentioned in this. Uh, Noah, um, I, I believe Rahab maybe, Enoch, um, Cain, a whole bunch of them are mentioned in the chapter 11 of Hebrews. Um, Hebrews 11, 6 says, And without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. So without faith, we can't please God. Okay? We cannot please God without faith. Um, because to have faith believes that he's real, that Jesus died for us. And that's what it means to, to live by faith. And that's what it means to please God, to be pleasing to God, is to have faith. And faith is dead without works, so how do we do works of faith? We go out and we tell others about God and about the saving grace of Jesus Christ and what he did for us and and what he's done for us personally in our own lives that's what it means to have faith that's working okay you cannot sit there and say oh well I believe Jesus Christ I believe in him and I have faith about this and faith about that but then just sit there your faith is dead your faith is dying Okay, because you have to work. When Christ, or when God calls you in, and you come to the saving grace of Jesus, He's got an assignment for you. No, it might not be to go out and preach. 
It might not be to go out and teach. It might not be to be a prophet, a prophet or anything like that. It may not even be to speak in tongues or anything like that. But we are all under assignment to give our testimonies to others. Because your testimony may influence someone else to hear the calling of God for them. So this is how, to answer your question, this is how all of this together is how we switch our focus. Okay. Um, you have to be willing to sit down. Okay. Start slow. I'm not telling you to go out and read the whole Bible in one night. Okay. There's seven days in a week. Surely. You can do both. 35 minutes a week to start with to God. To reading His scriptures. That's five minutes a day. Times seven days. That's 35. 35 minutes. Okay. Surely you can devote another 35 minutes to God in prayer. And I'm not talking a whole consecutive five minutes all at one time. Spread it out. Okay. Another thing is... The psalmist wrote, Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. God's name is literally Y-H-W-H. -H. That's literally his name. We have put the other consonants in to make it Yahweh. Or the vowels to make it Yahweh. That's not his name. His name is literally Y-H-W-H, -H, which when you speak in Hebrew, those are literally breath sounds. Literally breath sounds. The Y-H is the inhale, the W-H is the exhale. So when the psalmist wrote, everything that has breath, praise the Lord, that means literally every person on this earth is giving God praise every day. Every day. From, from the time they're born till the time they die. When we come into this world and we draw our first breath, we're praising God. And when we lay down and we draw our last breath and exhale out, we were praising God. And that's like the rocks breathe, the trees breathe, the birds and the fish. We all breathe. Everything breathes. So everything is praising the Lord. So if the trees can focus on God and praise Him and the rocks, then we can too. It's not easy. It's, it's going to be hard. Because, like I said before, we are inherently evil and selfish. Okay? And we have to choose to not be like that. So that we can focus on God. And it's going to take a lot of faith on your part to do this. And... I understand that you can't have your own children, but if you have faith enough and you pray about it, God throughout the Bible opened the womb of a lot of women. Okay? Samuel's mother, she couldn't have children and she was up in age, but God opened that womb and she had Samuel. And there were several others in the Bible that were up in age that couldn't have children. Abraham and Sarah, for instance. But God opened Sarah's womb at a very old age. And she had a child. Okay. 
And it takes faith. You just have to have faith. And even if, even if it never happens, maybe his plans for motherhood for you are different. Okay? So I hope I've answered your question. I know I bounced around a little bit, but I had a lot to say because I always do. <laughs> Especially when it comes to God, you know, I love, I love God, I love Jesus, I love Him, and, and, and one day I'm going to see Him face to face, and it's going to be a great day, okay, um, but like I said, if you're truly trying to, to turn your focus to God, get ready, because Satan's going to come at you with some with some opposition if you have if you have mental issues he's going to flare those up real good for you okay if you're having relationship issues he's going to flare that up real good for you if you're having issues on your job with relationships with friends satan's going to come in and he's going to flare those up real quick for you because you're going to make him more angry than he already is okay um you just you have to let go of the reins and focus. Focus on your faith. Focus on your walk. Um, it's like that song, Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go. Oh, be careful, little hands, what you do. Be careful, little mouth, what you say. And we just have to be careful of the things that we do, the things that we say. We need to be mindful of the things we watch. Because what goes in, eventually comes out. Okay? Um, and we just, we just need to be mindful of all of that. Um, it takes 27 days to form a habit. It takes 27 days to break a habit. You just need to go on a spiritual fast, okay? Shut down all TVs, radios, whatever you have to do to turn your focus. I don't know what your niche is. I don't know, for those of you out there, I don't know. Maybe it's drugs, maybe it's alcohol, maybe it's sex, maybe it's a bunch of other things. But you have to lay it all down to bring your focus more on God and if you're really being true and sincere in your heart of hearts he will help you lay that down because like I said in my last one I came to Christ and when I did he told me no more drugs no more drinking I laid them down and he helped me he helped me to do that and that's all I have on this matter today so I I hope I've helped you um, I pray I have you know because um, I love talking about God and I love talking about Jesus and I just I just love it you know and when I watch certain programs on nature channels and stuff it just astonishes me you know at, at the things God has created you know um, and it just astonishes me how God could love someone like me you know It just stirs me. So, y'all have a blessed evening. And y'all walk with God. Walk with Jesus. And be blessed. Remember, He loves you. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. Lord Jesus, I just come to you tonight, Lord. I lift up those that are out there searching for a, a reason to focus on you, Father. Lord, we just I just lift them up to you, Father, because they are missing something in their lives, Lord. And then there's those that are desperately trying to change their lives to bring their focus on you. Lord, I just lift them up to you tonight, Lord. I just pray that you just be with them, Lord. Father, we know that no one comes to you except for through the Son. Or we know that no one comes to Jesus except for through you. And Lord, we know that you are calling them. 
if you if they are truly wanting to focus their lives on you. And Father, I just say these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Bye.